15 years, it's pretty crazy. That was the first song that we wrote together for Where You Wanna Be, and it's been 15 years since that record came out. Um, it came out on my birthday. I remember the day very well, um, and I just wanted to reflect on that record for a second, just for my part, and um, just tell you, tell you a little bit about it. Um, it was definitely the craziest time of my life. I was going from uh, you know touring small bars in a van sleeping in the van to uh, total pandemonium on the warp tour uh, you know the first shows that I played with them um, were warp tour shows to 19 19 20 thousand people I mean it was total insanity um, and after uh, that summer uh, and fall tour we went in and started recording where you want to be um, it was it was it was the coolest experience I had ever had at that point, because uh, you know working with a real producer Lou Giordano in a real studio, Water Music up in Hoboken. Uh, um, you know we had a lot of time to work with more than I had ever had. We weren't rushing the process. Um, we uh, we we. We got to do exactly what we wanted. We demoed the whole record, and then uh, and um, and then changed the songs from there, and then recorded them for real. I can't emphasize enough how exciting of a time it was. Remembering back to the week that it came out, I remember uh, we had just finished a tour, and Fall Out Boy was opening for us, and Pete Wentz called me from their van, and they were on tour, and. Uh, he's like, we're all on tour together, and we all just went in and bought your new record, and that, that was the day it came out. And uh, and it just was the coolest thing because I had put something out that was in every store in America. That was the weird part. It was like, you know, I mean, times have changed, you know, but when when we all bought CDs, like, I had never done something that was distributed so widely that, like, my friends were calling, got my copy, and that was crazy into itself um, then to find out that it uh, it came up as number three on the billboard charts uh, that week and had sold like 163,000 I think I could be a few numbers off but it just was like it just blew our minds I mean it, it went gold in a relatively short period of time and it was just that was the rocket ship taking off that that led me down the next four years that was just um, you know I, 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 I talked to the uh, you know last week uh, when the anniversary was I talked to a couple of the guys in the band that week uh, just to just to catch up and I only look at those times as 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 positive at this point like I I just look at it as really good good exciting times and, and really good music too. So when I came into the band, obviously they were already established. So I kind of had to find my place in the writing process. Um, I, uh, you know, I kind of got the gig, I feel, because I've always been a singer-songwriter and, um, and, and that's sort of the role that John played. Obviously Adam writes a ton of the lyrics, but like, you know, you need that song guy to kind of hold it, like put it together. And um, so that was sort of my value, but I, um, I also had to kind of know my place because, you know, they still wrote songs. Um, and I think some of our strongest songs uh, were the ones that we all wrote together. Um, something like Decade Under the Influence, uh, Bonish Mosh Part Two, those were sort of like riffs that Eddie came up with and then um, you know we just kind of started jamming on and then Adam had some lyrics and then you know me as like the song guy arranger guy I come by and um, m you know make suggestions to 
keep it interesting and make it sound like an actual song. Um, so that's uh, that was kind of my role on this record. Uh, I was I was a full member of the band, and I you know they gave me they they were very generous with the uh, amount of input they gave to me, um, but um, that's sort of how it played out. Um, you know they we all wrote together, um, and then um, Adam and I kind of became more involved in the recording process and uh and like you know turned it into what what you know took what we had all worked on and made it into a, an actual record that's the way i look at it So this was the guitar that uh, those songs were recorded on. This is my Lily guitar, and uh, it's been my main guitar for a long time. One of the things that I really liked about when I joined Take It Back Sunday and recording this record was obviously the double vocals. Um, you know, having Adam as the main singer and being able to, to back that up with harmony, like various, you know, echo back and forth. Um, was was super fun for me because because I came from a band that was a three piece. I played guitar and was the lead singer, but I still got to sing and jump around and play play cool guitar parts. Um, and Adam was just so creative. He he always kind of knew what he wanted, um, and uh, I was sort of just editing um, as as would fit the music. But like, um, and obviously there are some songs. Um, that I got to, that I wrote the lyrics to, um, on that record would be like, I know you know, this photograph is proof, um, um, new American classic. Those were, you know, you can kind of tell those were more my, my lyrics, um, at the time. But, uh, you know, something like Set Phaser's A Stun, Bonus Mosh Part 2, like he had it all in his head and, uh, and he, you know, super creative guy with catchy stuff, and uh, so that was always a lot of fun, and especially recording. We would just stack on so many vocals until Lou Giordano, the producer, would be like, "Okay, guys, that's enough. Like, way too many." <laughs> and but to his credit, like, um, he left a lot of the vocals on there, and there's a there. If you listen to that album with headphones, you will hear so many vocal parts um, on everything because we just stacked it on on every song and you know we looked at every song as like this 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 is the hit you know we didn't think like we didn't like lay off of anything or like phone it in on any song it was always like and that's that was really the joy of being in Taking Back Sunday like no matter what those guys put in more effort than any other bands they're just always just hammering it and uh and, and they want it real bad and that's why that's why they've been going for all these years so um so i definitely appreciated that when i was with them um and i and i it was a it was, i learned a, a lot on that first record so it was it was good times another element that i was going for on that record as a guitar player was um i really liked the police when i was a kid and um, so I did this staccato like um, guitars. Uh, I I, I kind of made that like a thing on there. You know, obviously Seth Phaser's a son. The intro to the record. Say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes. Um, and there are there are a few songs on where I threw that in as like a signature thing, 
and it was it was good because it was sort of my way of stamping it of you know the new taking back sunday it was like a little part that i wanted to i wanted something to be different about this uh album from the last one i wanted something to set it apart that like they had lost guys and it was a big loss but they could come back even stronger that was the whole goal and um and it's funny because I, I I heard bands years after, you know, doing those sort, same sort of things that I know. Uh, I, I had a little influence on some people. Imitation's the best form of flattery. I always take that as like yes, like, like um, I I that's what I str- you know that's what I live for to be honest. <laughs> um, but uh, so uh, but yeah, I mean I think at the time. The reason is at the time that record didn't sound like all the other records in our genre. I mean, there were a lot of records that sounded original. You know, My Chemical Romance didn't sound like anyone else either. But like we were able to do our own thing and not just um, say, what's the trend now? Let's follow that. We kind of like um, definitely did things our own way. I think because of all the influences that all the guys had. Um, Whereas I was like, kind of like, in the like, old school, mm, post hardcore punk thing as it was Eddie, but I was also influenced by a lot of rock and roll, like Van Halen. Um, Matt came from a totally different scene, the bass player, um, and uh, you know Mark liked uh, all like a lot of uh, like, you know some hip hop and and. Uh, yeah, incubus type of stuff and uh uh adam you know we all came from a different place and we had to like make it work and uh i would say adam at the time was into like jay-z and third eye blind and i mean not to speak for those guys but i'm just trying to set up the the, the scene for you so we all come together and like i don't really like third eye blind at the time you know i don't really listen to a lot of new hip-hop um but like they don't listen to any old classic rock so i'm like bringing in some zeppelin they're they're bringing in some you know lyrics spitting out uh you know uh you know some knowledge and and uh and matt's going like oh i heard this on uh on a jazz record you know and and we put it all together, and we don't sound like all the other emo bands. And that, that, that's probably, I could have said it more eloquently, but to me that's what made us tick. That's what made it work. I was developing myself as a guitar player at that time because, you know, previous to Taking Back Sunday, I worked a lot, and now I was going to be able to play guitar 24-7, which is exactly what I did. I started to work on my open... Uh, open uh, string type of uh, I'm working on my open string parts like in Set Phasers of Sun that was like I was starting to really develop that style which led to you know things like spin or you know that you know that sort of thing that I got really really into in the years to come there was also um, bonus mosh the verses of bonus mosh part two I was I started on that that whole uh, pull off thing I was I was just starting to develop it in those years <laughs> And I, you know, I, I love playing those parts, obviously. Um, but that was that's my pull off with the open strings, and I just love the sound of you know open strings on guitars. Um, it's just I like pretty guitars. That's kind of what I bring to the table. So it's been really fun reflecting on the 15th anniversary of where you want to be. And right now, I want to thank you guys uh, for making it happen back then. I'm still hearing about this album 
on a regular basis, which is why we're still talking about it 15 years later. And uh, I owe a lot to you guys. It changed my life, and uh, and I I couldn't appreciate it more. So uh, so thank you. It was uh, it was a super. No matter what anyone says, it was a super fun time for me. And uh, I want to thank you guys uh, for going through it with me. So thanks. <laughs>